Pythagoras' Theorem 2 Finding a shorter side We can use Pythagoras' Theorem to find one of the shorter sides of a right angle triangle. For any right angle triangle, I can label the two short sides, A and B, and it doesn't really matter which way round they go. And I can label the longest side, or the hypotenuse, as C. Then I can write Pythagoras' Theorem as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this will help me find out one of the shorter sides. Let's have a look at this problem. I've been asked to find out one of the shorter sides, and I know the hypotenuse and one of the other shorter sides. Write out Pythagoras' theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to try and find out what a is equal to. I'm going to call b4. But it doesn't really matter which way round they go. a squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Now remember that squaring something means times it by itself. So 4 times 4 is equal to 16, and 5 times 5 equals 25. Now I've got a squared plus 16 equals 25, but really I want to get a squared by itself. So I'm going to take away 16 from both sides, the a squared is still there. 16 take away 16 leaves nothing. And I've got 25 minus 16 on the other side. Now 25 minus 16 equals 9, so a squared equals 9. But I don't really want to know what a squared is, I want to know what a is. So I'm going to square root both sides. The square root of a squared is a. And I've got the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3, so the missing side x equals 3. Here's another example. Again I've been asked to find one of the shorter sides, so I'm going to write Pythagoras' theorem like this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now this time I think I'll call b the thing that I'm missing. So a equals 5, b is the thing I'm trying to find out and C, the hypotenuse, is 13. 5 times 5 is 25. I still don't know B squared. 13 times 13 is 169. Now, 25 plus B squared equals 169. Really, I want to get B squared by itself, so I'm going to take away 25 from both sides. 25 times, take away 25 is nothing. The b squared is still there. I've got 169 minus 25 on the other side. 169 minus 25 is 144, so b squared equals 144. But I don't really want to know what b squared is, I want to know what b is. So I'm going to square root both sides. The square root of b squared is b. The square root of 144 is 12. So on this example, y, one of the shorter sides, equals 12. Again we've got an example where we don't know what one of the shorter sides is. So I'm going to write Pythagoras' theorem like this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this time I think I'll use a as a thing I don't know. So I fill in all my numbers, a I don't know, b is 8, as one of the shorter sides, and the hypotenuse, C, is 10. 8 times 8 is 64. 10 squared is 10 times 10 is 100. Now I've got A squared plus 64 equals 100. Really I want to get A squared by itself, so I'm going to take away 64 from both sides. The A squared is still there. 64 take away 64 leaves nothing and I've got 100 take away 64 on the other side. 100 take away 64 is 36. Now I've got a squared equals 36, but I don't really want to know a squared, I want to know a. So I'm going to square root both sides. The square root of a squared is a, and I've got the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6, 
So the short side, I wanted to find out, z equals 6. We can use Pythagoras' theorem to find one of the shorter sides of a right angle triangle. We use it in this format, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the shorter sides, it doesn't really matter which way round they go, and c is the hypotenuse or the longest side.